passing through the origin. Okay. I think the tangent plane, locally speaking, no matter how far you zoom in, is neither entirely on one side or the other. Okay. Of that plane. So now could the tangent plane yeah, intersect yeah. other parts of the yeah. surface? Absolutely. And oh, I mentioned okay. that at the beginning. Okay. It could, it's just locally speaking. So locally speaking, this is okay. That makes sense. Guys, installing. I forgot what I was saying next. Um, I got an idea. Yes or no response. Look at what I have up here. Do you think the tangent plane approximates the surface, locally speaking, about a comma b? Yeah, it does. And so sometimes I'm a little goofy. Sometimes you just say, well, forget about the equation of the tangent plane. Let's think of this whole thing as the output of a, um, um, a local linearization of my surface. What? And local linearization means the same darn thing. It means <coughs> the function whose output is indeed the equation of the tangent plane. And so let me change my question. So two, determine the local linearization. is equal to this junk. Centered about at that point P. <coughs> I'll wait for you guys to get caught up. Why the word linearization? That makes it sound like a line. Because yeah. I think when it comes to plane, uh, linearization is the first word that comes immediately to my mind. What about plane? I think there is linearity. <laughs> what about planarization? Or, or you know, good, good, good point. That might work better. It's not the word we the use, but the planarization. <laughs> Is the definition of plane? Do you have a curved plane? What is the definition of plane? Do you guys remember? Never defined. No, we've never had one. That term is so understood, we think, so basic that we don't even define it. It's what we refer to as an undefined term. But it is flat, right? It is flat. Okay, so you can't. It's not flat. I'll use the word surface instead. Okay. Although I have to admit, a plane is an example of a surface in terms of space. I vaguely remember this term linearization from math 30. You did the same thing in math 30, you just simply did it in two-dimensional space. Well, yeah, when we were getting like, it was like estimate root 2 or something. Yes, I agree. Okay. So did you guys remember in high school geometry? I mean, it really was the case that when it came to words like a point or line or plane, you decided those are so darn basic, we're not going to struggle with the notion of defining these terms. You refer to them undefined. So it's sort of like understood that you and I had this intuitive notion that a plane is just a flat surface to increase this. What's the accuracy of this uh, uh, estimation? Depend heavily the, on the angle from that you uh, come, or the direction you come out from that point. Well, that. its accuracy depends on what angle I believe that point. Yeah. But how about you say it's more globally? Um, I think the accuracy of my approximation depends heavily, basically, on how far I am from the well, yeah, but it's also dependent on how you come out of it. Because uh, you could have a tangent plane that, uh, because you could have a local maximum, for example, where you get this tangent plane that's at zero, but it could just decrease really fast. On one side and not the other, in one yeah. direction. But absolutely, so, I agree completely. If it has to be a circular paraboloid, at the origin, I think it's not, it doesn't matter what direction you walk in, but most surfaces, yeah, it will make a difference. But yeah, so, yeah. so we might take the limit of the function as x, y, and z approach a, b, and c, and then compare that to the linearization here, x, comma, y. I, I suppose I could, but in every single case, I'll get the same guy. Mm -hmm. It better be, because that is the point of tangency. That is the one point I'm considering this is, is the intersection between the tangent point and the surface. Could we, like, I don't know, like a harder one or like a weird way of asking for this or something? Just like in a question or an example? Like something that... A harder example. I don't think I can. I think it's just that basic. Oh, okay. You guys ready for me to race? Yeah. Sure. You guys wake up. Everybody ready for me to race? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. 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 One quick question. We were in the particle of uh, respect to speed. How did you get one for that again? I got it from this. Oh, shoot. I don't need sideboards. Um, here's a small, small e board. <laughs> Do you remember how I started off by looking at big F? You've added those three variables to set equal to zero. 
But it came from me saying, well, I really just wanted to talk about this, the gra graph of the surface. And I said, let's attract that from both sides. Yeah. Jeepers, what am I doing? I'm just stuck in math deep in our time. It's a nice place to be stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and so, if you think of what's above my brace as big F, mm -hmm. wouldn't big S partial respect to Z just be one? Alex? Because I'm stomping my feet on X and Y treating as constants. What you see inside this big blue circle is just an algebraic expression in x and y. So when I partially differentiate the left-hand side with respect to z, I get positive. Mm -hmm. You sure? Okay, yeah, but then you get 1 equals 0. What do you mean 1 equals 0? Well, don't look at the 0 anymore. I was just saying, consider what's above this black brace, my, the output of my function big O. Is that better? Well, that is where I got the positive. So, you guys, I'm not going to erase anything. I think it's goofy. I think what I have sitting in front of me is nothing more than the output of my local linearization. Do you guys agree this is silly stuff? Is local linearization something you made up? I mean, like, the book uses the words. I'm both. Okay. It's a standard phrase for what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, what can you say about... This. Hey, guys, I don't have glasses, sorry. I'm a little slow. And this is just for the same function as before? Or? Substitute 1.1 1 .1 and 1.9 into that <coughs> original function there, and that'll give you a the original function. Oh, you're or right. Or Thank you. I can just pick up 1.1 uh, and 1.9, stick it in for x and y here, and sorry, I'm done. What about using my local linearization? Well, you've got this is what we solve for here: 2x plus 5y minus. And so I think my local linearization in value of 1.1 comma 1.9 is merely um, 2 times 1.9 plus 5 times 1.9. Minus 6. Ah, but cheapers, that's just 2.2 .2 plus, um, is it a 9.5? 5 here. Times minus 6. 5 times minus. Which is nothing more than 11.7 minus 6, or shall I say 5.7? 5 5 5 and then this guy over here is probably going to come out to be the same thing. Good. I should double check my work, you guys. Maybe I made a horrible mistake. And so just taking the original function and evaluating at 1.1 comma 1.9, I'm simply going to get a 1.1 times 1.9 plus my 1.9 squared. You know, you guys, I went this far. I, I don't like boring you with the reference there. Let's just see how far off we are. 1.1 times my 1.9 plus my 1.9 twice, I come up with this. <coughs> Was that funny? Okay, something interesting just happened here. What happened? Yeah. Uh, about how that number is x minus a or y minus b. Ooh, like the whole thing. <coughs> right here. Uh, like I feel like it should have been one point one minus one. Like we had the parentheses with an x minus a, and you just. Thank you. That's why I'm wrong. I really did make that mistake. You guys, I'm going to put it in the board. I didn't put it in my, my x minus a. I completely uh, dropped it. <laughs> what is the x minus a? Uh, it's 0 0.1. 0 0.1. What's my um, y minus b? Say it again. Negative 1. Where, where are you pulling those numbers from? Well, I, I'm just putting these factors right here. Yeah. When I did the arithmetic, I forgot those factors. Right, right. But A and B, where are you getting your A and B values from? Sorry, I might, I might have missed that. Well, A is understood to be the positive the one. B is understood to be two. But then you need to change negative six to a positive six because we had already canceled out the focus. 
that's how we got the two x plus five y minus. Well, this is plus f of a b. So what's plus f of a b? Six plus six. I erased the middle board. Shoot! Now I'm unhappy. What do we have up here? Some localization. Two x plus five y plus six. Oh, hold on. You said two x. Minus six. Minus six. <coughs> so if that's what I have for my local linearization, then so let's crank it out. Here's a partial f with respect to x. Ev out of my flat one comma two. <coughs> it's just this. Plus my partial with respect to y, since it's erased off the board, ev out of one comma two, wouldn't that give me a five times y minus a two plus my f ev out of a comma b, which is six. And so if this is going to be a lo my local conversation, <coughs> I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. I don't. Here's a plus six, isn't it? Could you guys no. please? No. Oh, I didn't finish up. My apologies. Cheapers. I still didn't finish. My goodness. But that's 2x plus 5y minus 6. Minus 6. That's where it came from. Got it. But you guys, can we hold on a minute? I, I know I need to fix this, but it was too interesting that that number was the same. <laughs> that number is the same as the output of my function. Just what does that mean? It's just really accurate function. It means that your linearization is incredibly accurate. For that, for that, for that it's point? not changing. It's just too much of a particular case scenario. It means they are testing. Nice. It means even though I had a point of tangency at one comma, whatever it is, two six, like that. but the curve kind of bent back up and hit the tangent point exactly when x is uh, one point one and y was one point nine. That's what it really meant. That's why I stopped saying, "Wow, look at that. That's really interesting." Okay, so I made my arithmetic Explain errors. Explain that again. Pause. That last part. The red isn't supposed to be there, right? That when it came out equal, what did it be? Did you guys want to be Oh, let's suppose I get this. What if I got this? That means this z value is the same z value as if I plug in um, all this stuff. And I think that would be really cool because what it really means is that I've got a tangent plane for my surface, but the surface wrapped around and hit. Exactly when x and y are these two values. That's pretty cool. But I'll, I'll come back to this one. Oh, uh, what's the right there? So with my local linearization, 1.1 comma 1 comma 1. If I just did 1.1 1 .1 and 1.9 and 4 x and y here, doesn't that give me this? It gives me my two times my 1.1. Okay, something like this. Plus my 5 times 1.9 minus my 6, which ended up being 2.2 plus. Yeah, that's what we were saying. Just take out the red. Oh, why? I didn't have the red there to begin with. Somebody told me to put it in. Yeah, yeah, that's what we were asking. Yeah. Oh, because you were looking up here. I see. Count. So there's no one here that cares. It just, again, needs a surface really. Oh, you guys, another twist. Oh, but you know what? This twist is an important one. Maybe not today, but it's going to be extremely important for you and I. Particularly you know, in the last chapter of the text. So watch me play. I'll subtract F of A B from the signs. Would you guys not agree? This really is just nothing more than a small change in the z direction. Do you guys agree? I don't see what you're saying. Well, I, I think the difference between z and a particular z value is just a small change in z values. Particularly if my z is really close to f of a b. 
Oh, you don't like that? No, I don't. Well, what would you say about x minus x naught? If this is a math D class, I got some function like this. Here's my x naught. Does x minus x not simply represent a small distance in the x axis? Depends on what x and x naught are. Because it could be a pretty big difference depending on what it is. That's fine. I'm just speaking locally, just like a local linearization. But locally speaking, it's just a change in x. Okay. Do you guys also agree that everything you see above my brace represents z values on the surface? Yes. I think the answer is no. I think what you see above my brace is simply the z values on the tangent plane. So if you don't mind, I think this is a mere approximation for the small change in z. Gosh, when it comes to approximation to small change of anything, what, what language do you use? The delta. Delta. What well, language words? Uh, it's math 30. It's not trying to remember. <laughs> so, uh, differentials. So I think the differential of our z is going to be expressed as nothing more than, oh, look at that, the partial of f with respect to x <coughs> times them. Um, oh, look at this. Trip the undermine. Isn't that a small change in the x direction? Plus the partial of f respect to y times, uh, oh, look at that. That's just a small change in the y direction. And because my differential for z is expressed as that combination of these differentials for x and y, I'll refer to these as my independent differentials. In English, I'll think of this as my, um, my, um, I'll think of this as my total differential. Okay. Now, I think everything I'm saying today in class is all the same thing. I'm just saying it with different language. So a total differential for z is simply going to be expressed by that algebraic expression. No longer partial of x uh, at a comma b. You know, in practice, it will be. I mean, in practice, I'm going to be looking at a differential for a small change in x direction and y direction, and I put those directions in. I might even evaluate these partials at the point a comma b, depending what the application is. Now, I am intentionally not putting in because in the near future, you and I are going to treat these as functions. Well, these two factors here and here as functions in x and y. So, in the near future, I'm not going to be looking. We have a vector that's dx dy. We have the gradient, which is partial y. Quite the contrary. Well, oh, you mean a vector whose components are dx and dy? Yeah. Um, you know what? I suppose I could, and I can think of that as a result of a dot product. I don't know that it helps me. Because in practice, I, I'll think of dx and dy as actual changes. So I got a small box. It's a partial derivative. Just write this down, and I'll finish it next time. Example implicit differentiation. I got a box. And I want this dimension right here to increase by, I don't know, how about one tenth of a unit? This dimension to increase by um, this much of a unit. And this dimension to decrease by this much. This much. And let me guess, we need to find out what the change in the volume is? Thank you. Estimate the change in the volume. And we will. Did we do this in Math 31? In we did math something very similar. This is like this math, math 30. What do you mean in Math 31? Like, like, I remember doing the volume stuff in Math 31. Well, yeah. computing volumes, perhaps. And we like did like works and loads of pressures on dams and things. So yeah, but nothing in terms of uh, related rates is changing. Related rates is always going to be one or two dimensions. It's never, it's never three. Oh, I disagree. Looking at my zones, looking like that with a blue flow down. Yeah.